So this is Tenshin Nasukawa. He's an insanely athletic fighter. And this was a recommendation from the Patreon, and that takes precedence. So if you guys want recommendations to get moved up the pipeline, uh, you can recommend them on the Patreon. Uh, this was really fun to look at because we're going to look at boxing combos. He's such a versatile fighter. We're going to look at the boxing combo here with Rodriguez, and then we're going to look at a 360 roundhouse kick that he lands. And look at some of the differences between the two styles that he's able to kind of adapt to. So one was really flashy and athletic, and this one's just really nice and tight uh, when it comes to his boxing skills. So let's back all the way up. I'm going to let you watch it all the way through, and then we'll go through it. We'll do a little bit more anatomy on this one, and then the other one will just be more of a general concept. This is in slow-mo, so it's still easy to watch. Right, left. Nice. Okay, so let's back it all the way up, and we'll go through it. So with this first, he, he kind of jabs and hops a little bit to close the distance, and he steps inside the shoe, or inside the, the stance of Rodriguez. It's important, we'll reference that later. He steps inside and then starts a really good movement with the kinetic chain. So let's just start with the back leg. So he's doing a combination of plantar flexion, knee extension, and hip extension uh, to try and shift the weight as he's moving forward, his center of mass is moving forward, to accept the weight on that front leg because this leg actually does come out. So muscles like the gastrocnemius or the gastrocnemius and the soleus, but the gastrocnemius complex, and then you have the quad that extends the knee, and then the hamstrings and the glutes that extend the hip. So as he's accepting the weight on the right leg, he's going into closed chain hip internal rotation. We see this a lot when we're throwing uh, straight lefts and when we're throwing overhands and things like that. As we move up the trunk, we see that he doesn't really separate his hips and his shoulders very much. Fighters like Garcia and Tapuria, for, ex for instance, do this a lot where they, they'll, they'll switch their hips really quickly and then their shoulders will lag behind, their thoracic spine will lag behind. He doesn't really do this very much, so he does a very good job of staying tight. And there are times when and when not to do it. I know I harp on the hip shoulder separation whenever it happens, just to, to kind of describe how it may uh, be involved in something more global like athleticism in general or contribute to the power of a punch, but I'm not saying that this is something that you should train for. This is the hip-shoulder separation and the ability to move the hips and the shoulders at the same time even is more of a fight IQ thing, uh, and it's just a description of what's happening at the time. I'm, I'm not an, an advocate for trying to work this into your training intentionally, uh, but sorry for that tangent. It's just I've seen a lot of comments like that before. So this when he stays tight like this, it allows this delivery of his upper extremity to be a lot more forceful, actually. So again, we've got that weight moving onto the front leg at the center of mass moving forward. His lumbosacral, thoracic, and thoracolumbar spine are all moving in unison in a rotational manner across that vertical axis, which is his spine. And then we have really a combination of shoulder flexion and horizontal adduction, although it's not necessarily a hook, it's just a, it, it's less of pure horizontal adduction and flexion. It's kind of like this in-between movement. Uh, so he throws this left with muscles like the anterior delt and the pec major, lands really nicely, and then you see here, like we saw in the breakdown of Rod, Tick, Rod, uh, Rod Tang and Superlek, this shoulder is, shoulder blade is really nice and flush against the thoracic spine, so that scapulothoracic movement is really good there. Muscles like the serratus anterior are keeping that really flushed and help it follow through all the way through whenever it makes contact. Okay, and then closes the distance again. Does the same thing with his back leg. This time he goes a little lower because he's hitting a body shot and wants to go below Rodriguez's guard. So this time he actually steps off the center line. Okay, so that was just a little bit of a difference there from the last combo he threw. He takes advantage of something called the stretch reflex here. So at the shoulder, again, he's not moving his shoulders and his hips. He's moving them in unison. He doesn't separate them really throughout this entire combo. He shifts his weight to the front leg, rotates his hips, and then watches shoulder here. Muscles like the pec and the anterior delt and even the bicep since he's coming from lower. It's a little bit more pure shoulder flexion. This is an eccentric elongation as he brings it back. That amortization, it switches from concentric or eccentric to concentric, and then that makes the concentric more forceful. And then he gets some good thoracic rotation there. And again, the shoulder blade is nice and flush with the thoracic spine. 
or the scapula is nice and flush with the thoracic spine. Okay, and then he does it again. So with this uppercut, I want you to notice something really good. So he drops his weight in order to extend the back. So again, that calf muscle, the quads, and then the glutes and hams respectively, or glutes and hams together co-contracting to create that global extension of the, the back leg. Because he's not actually shifting his weight, unlike the last two punches, he's not shifting his weight onto the front leg. He's actually keeping his weight on the back leg so he can send his center of gravity up while he hits the uppercut. And again, it's more it's the pure shoulder flexion with thoracic rotation. All right, so then he throws a left there, but the main, this one here is what I want you to watch. So this is a really good display of shoulder, what, what they do with the other side, the non-striking hand to gain that rotational kind of momentum or force around that, again, that vertical axis in the transverse plane when he throws this right hook. So you can see the shoulder blade move a little bit closer to the spine. It's a combination of scapular adduction or retraction and then horizontal abduction at the shoulder, the glenohumeral joint. He does the same thing here, only when he's rotating his thoracic spine, again, not entirely separated from his hips. You can see that that, that glenohumeral joint, he's, he's still in a position of relative horizontal abduction. And so that stretch reflex that we mentioned earlier on muscles like the pec and the anterior delt is in full effect here. Okay, that really forceful concentric contraction. And then he plants and does the exact same thing that he did with the other left and it lands well. So he shifts his weight all the way to the front, keeps his back leg in, in contact with the kinetic chain. It follows all the way up into contact. Okay. Watch it all the way through, full speed again, keeping all of those things in mind, and then we'll move on to the next view. Really athletic stuff. This view is mainly just to kind of give, uh, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the, athlete, the sheer athleticism that Ten Shinasukawa shows here. This is mainly gonna be about the hip-shoulder separation, uh, particularly after he was able to keep it so tight whenever he was boxing. Uh, and this just shows that he has a, a massive toolbox that he can pull from at a young age, and it's just really, really cool to see. So the big thing I want you to notice here, again, is that hip-shoulder separation. So watch his shoulders and watch his hips. They really don't start to separate until about right here. So notice that his hips, if, just, if you were to take his hips and he were to straighten up and make his hips and shoulders align, he would pretty much be facing over here towards the, this side of the ring. And his shoulders are pointing all the way to the corner. So they're at least at a 45 degree angle from one another, probably even more, right? So whenever he starts to gather that rotational momentum using those arms, like we saw the ties do, or like we see the ties do when they're throwing that roundhouse kick, he plants the leg that he's going to kick with and his shoulders begin to separate now, whenever we see people punch, we see the hips shift first and then the upper body follows. Whenever you're throwing a kick, typically the shoulders rotate first and then the hips follow, okay? Creating a lot of that tension in the muscles like the internal and external obliques of the trunk. Not only that, he's got a ton of hip extension here as he leaps off the ground. So muscles like the rectus femoris that cross the hip and the knee are going to be taking advantage of that stretch reflex going from a position of relative extension to massive flexion. And then he rotates his hips to catch up to the plane of the shoulders and then surpass it. Flexes really hard here at the trunk. You get a really good view of that here. And then makes contact. And then as he lands, look at the flexibility there. So my dude's almost in a split as he lands. A lot of people would have fallen down after making contact there. Uh, but he's actually able to kind of land and, and move afterwards, <laughs> athletically. So one more time, his hips and his shoulders stay relatively in sync. When he plants, he extends his hips. His hips and his shoulders start to separate. Shoulders move first. His hips come around and catch up. And with a lot of trunk, and, trunk flexion and hip flexion, he connects with the kick. So really now I'm going to show that full speed. To end the video. Nice.